Hello guys and welcome back to episode 10 of our Machinagon Let's Play series. And today we have a lot to get through because next week, next week Tuesday is the big day where we will be unlocking update 4 stuff. Finally! In the last episode you may have remembered that we had iron plates that we needed to produce and we didn't do it. And we also needed to produce iron rods for our rotors and we didn't do it. So that's the first job of today. The plates are obviously for our reinforced iron plate line, which seems to be empty, although we're full to the brim with screws. And we need the rods for our rotor production. However, that does bring us to another slight issue um, and something that I want to resolve, which is this mess. This is horrendous. <laughs> the screws are all over the place. I think I've worked it out in my head. Um, so what we're going to do is two lines of five assemblers and then put two constructors in between. And it's just going to slightly improve the efficiency. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll be better than what it is already. And then if we get all of that done, we can actually build the motors as well. So plenty to do. Let's get started. We have a total of 16 smelters smelting iron ingots here, which means we can actually cope with, I think, enough constructors for eight, 30 per minute. Yes. So each one of these produce at 30 per minute. So we can have eight of these to these eight. And then on the other side, if we go to rods, 15 per minute. So we can have 16. So we're going to have 16. Yeah, let's do this. We'll start off with a line of constructors along here for the plates. And then we'll do a double manifold here. Oh, along here, more or less, for the rods. I think this might be one of those uh, time lapse guys. And we finally have iron plates going off to become the wonderful reinforced iron plates. I'm quite happy with that. And then the other thing, of course, was the iron rod system that we've just built. We've got 16 constructors, which are each producing 15 iron rods per minute, which I think means we're running. Wait, is that 270? Is that a full line? Let me wipe that out. 240. OK, well, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. I can live with that. Those are all about to get sent over to here. But before we get this up and running, I'm going to have to redo it because this is this is ugly and I don't like it. And it's 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 giving me nightmares, guys. I can't sleep at night. The screws. <laughs> no way. It's not happening. If you look over here, you can see we have some iron rods coming along and making their way down to but you can't see it from here down to here and they will soon go to the assemblers which are over here for the rotors. However, we have a problem as you guys have once again no doubt already noticed. We're out of power and it's really annoying and I know exactly why. You can see. And this is actually really important if you're starting your update for saves because power plants will now be running at full capacity all the time. If you're not doing it efficient, efficiently, if you do not have, say, your three water extractors to eight cold generators, you're going to get these kind of little spikes and it's going to gradually decrease from what it was normally, which is what? Is that 700 roughly? To down here where it's, it's cut off. So I'm going to have to go back up and uh, sort that now. You can see here, guys, we have four extractors to 16 power plants that is ter terribly 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 inefficient 
we, we definitely need two more extractors built and we need to somehow fit them all together. Looking closely at these power plants, it's easy to see what I've done wrong. So I just wanted to get those ones up and running and I cut out one of these extractors and placed it along there. The idea is that these were going to be a neat little row and uh, then all the water will be connected. And in doing so, I ended up connecting this middle pipe with this one and this pipe I disconnected. So in theory, all I need to do right now for this section of the power plant is we're really careful. Just do that. Make sure these are running. Remove this pipe. And now this section should work perfect. Oh, no, it won't. We need to disconnect that and connect these. So the next thing that we need to do is add one more of these. And that isn't going to work because we have no copper sheets, which means we need to head back to base. I'm not going to say anything about the efficiency of this. In fact, no, I can do. Currently, it will run 100% as planned. However, it doesn't look very clean. So one day, at some point, I will be fixing this entirely. I think the best way to go would probably be to overclock these to 250% just for the ease, because they will then be producing 300, yes, 300 water per minute, which is obviously one full Mark I um, pipeline, which would certainly help with the logistics and getting everything running as efficiently as possible. Or at least it would be compared to a system like this, which is splitting things between three different pipes. It's just a bit, bit, bit too much work. So if we can, later on, we will overclock those extractors. Our iron lines are now running. Look at that, beautiful. And even more importantly, so are our rod lines as well. And they were currently backed up in the constructors, which is why you might see some of the lines not running. But as soon as these have all cleared and, and saturated, desaturated, and cleared up themselves, everything will be running to 100% efficiency. You can see we've done a lovely little bus underneath. I quite like this. We're probably going to cover it in glass again. But then this is going to head towards the main base where it will then hide its way beneath the spaghetti, the al dente spaghetti, this is a lovely bus. I love this bus, it looks great. Before making its way over to the rotor production, which is the next thing that we need to sort out. As for the time being, these are all just being sunk. But no, the next big thing for us is sorting up this massive screw up that we did last week. Oh dear, I'm already regretting it. Look at it, look at that, oh. It's terrible. We've got it. This, this here, the mess, it's a catastrophe. Yeah, we've got a lot to work with, but it's all right. We're going to remove all of this. As you can see, it's coming on nicely. Um, it looks much better in my opinion, but we still need to sort out the iron rods, which we're going to do with a, a, another manifold just around the outside. And then they'll all be running in the middle. And there it is, we have finished our rotor production finally and it's so much better than the, the weird screw spaghetti mess that we did last week. The only thing is, once again, we are out of power. So this is something that we do need to resolve. Um, hopefully we'll have time to get started on it now. If not, that will be for next week. So what did we do today, I hear you say? Well, we managed to do quite a bit. Actually, I'm quite happy with what we managed to get on with. First thing we got sorted out today was the plate line, which is now feeding into the reinforced iron line, which of course is not working because we're out of power. We then did the iron rods little manifold line over here, which again isn't working because we're out of power. And the iron rods followed along this lovely new bus, which we've still not put the glass over the top yet, all the way to the rotor sector, which in my humble opinion, looks so much better than it did before. Oh, I can't even bear looking at the, the original. Ugh, disgusting. But of course, this isn't running because once again, we have no power. But don't let that worry you because we have a lot to get on with for next week. 
So guys, that's all we have time for in this episode. If you did like it, please do drop a thumbs up. And obviously, if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're in the premiere with us, then don't forget you can join us over on Twitch immediately after to continue with episode 11. Ah, shit. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, I got it. Wait, one second. Wait for it. Any, wait, wait, wait for it. Bam, I bet you didn't see this one coming. We're adding lights to the game. Ooh, lights. Now your game can be brighter than my future. There are three different types of lights. There's big ceiling lights, perfect for indoors. There's tall spotlight towers, primarily used for outside areas. And street lights that are mostly there for decoration. Oh, and you can set their color and brightness too. Oh boy, it's actually happening, you guys. Drones are here. They're designed for long-range, low-resource transport. They can't carry many resources at a time, but they're doing their best. Each port can only contain one drone, but move across the map extremely quickly and are far easier to set up than trains, belts, or trucks. Drones require batteries as fuel, and their consumption rate and travel speed become more efficient as delivery distances increase. Simply put down a drone port at two separate locations, slap a drone on one or both to increase throughput, Connect your ports, hook up your batteries, and the drone will fly back and forth, delivering whatever you put in the port. The hover pack uses power from the grid to function by wirelessly connecting to nearby power connections, like power poles or the connectors on buildings. And it allows players to fly through the factory and hover in mid-air. Not the fastest way to get around, but definitely the best option for pioneers looking to get a good overview of their production lines and to build from a higher vantage point. Whoa, Jace, look! So <laughs> real life lizard doggo. <laughs> Wait, it's still the premiere and you're here? Man, hats off to you. But what are you waiting for? Hit the like and join me over on Twitch. We've got a lot to get through. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you goes out to all of our supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse patrons, The Calamity, Cerebral Tag, Trebor and JP Zone TV, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Matt Lippard, Chris McCabe and Lord of July, and our Blood Moon of the Day, Jonah Dent. Anyway, guys, see you soon. Ciao for now.